Welcome to another edition of Guns 101, brought to you by the Self-Defense Radio Network. I'm Rob Morse from Self-Defense Gun Stories. Good-looking gal with the dog there is Amanda Suffolk from Eye on the Target Radio. The guy doing the heavy lifting behind the scenes, that's Paul Lather from the Polite Society podcast. We have Charlie Cook with us. That's Charlie from writing Shotgun with Charlie and the personal shooting instruction. Charlie, eye dominance. When we go and hold a gun out in front of us, all of a sudden, how do we get the sights lined up with our eyes in the target? That's a great question. There's a front sight and a rear sight. And I've actually had some students think the front sight was the sight that was closest to them. The sight that's closest to the shooter is the rear sight and the front sight's on the other end of the muzzle. That's where we want the bullets coming out because that's the front of the gun. We want to make sure that the front sight is lined up evenly with the rear sight. And we want to make sure we're looking at the front sight with our dominant eye. We have one eye that works more than the other one, even though we might not realize it. Some people are right-handed and right-eye dominant. Some people are left-handed and left-eye dominant. And then there are some freaks of nature, like myself, that are right, uh, right-handed right and left-eye dominant. The way that you find out which is your dominant eye is you take a look at an object. And I'm going to look right at my screen here, uh, right at the camera. And I'm going to make a small little triangle with my hands. And I'm going to close my right eye. Actually, I can bring it back. And I can still see the camera. And I can see that my... Uh, the hole here is is with my over my left eye, so that my left eye is my dominant eye. The other way that I found to determine which eye is your dominant eye, and it's very unscientific, is I've asked people which eye they wink with. Now, most people I know can wink, but I know not everyone can. But I wink with my right eye, and my left eye is my dominant eye. And I, I was with some students recently. I asked them to wink. Their right eye was their dominant eye. They closed their left eye. This feels weird to me, but this this doesn't feel so bad. Okay. Now, Charlie, that's really funny. As, as you're talking about it, all of the rest of us are like, which way do we wink? How do we wink? <laughs> <laughs> is it true? It is. It, uh, yeah. We'll just, okay. We'll, just well sorry. Down. For the people that can wink. <laughs> We, we know that Amanda can't wake. Um, okay, so why does eye dominance matter? Eye dominance matters because when we're focusing on the target, our eyes are a few inches apart. And we can only see we're lining the, the rear sight and the front sight up with one of our eyes. If you're looking down the barrel, uh, down uh, if you're looking down the sights with your dominant eye, and you close your dominant eye, open your non-dominant eye, you're going to see the side of the gun. And you, um, that is not where the bullet's going to go. You want to make sure that your eye is lined up with the rear sight, then the front sight, and then with the target. The main thing that you need to focus on is the front sight. The front sight's going to tell you if the you're shooting high or shooting low or shooting to the left or to the right. Uh, you really have to focus on the front sight. The front sight needs to be even with the rear sight, so there's a straight line going across the top. And the sides... Um, the space between the rear sight and the front sight, um, the space that you get when you when you look at the rear sight. So our, our rear sight is here, and our front sight is going to be here. We want these to be even and uh, straight across the top. And then we have good sight alignment. And with good sight alignment and good trigger squeeze, we should be able to hit bullseyes every time. Sure. <laughs> I say should. It takes, <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of human error. <laughs> well, brand new shooters and brand new shooting. This is really like the ultimate in interactive video games. I mean, because it is a contest of yourself against yourself to watch yourself get better, obtain a skill, and get get better at it. And so, so the things that you're walking people through. You say it pretty simple. Okay, identify your eye dominance, you know, squeeze the trigger, look at the sights. You you need to know what each one of those things, what you're looking for, what you're looking at, and why it matters. So my advice to new shooters is take a look at your gun, look look at it, not with it unloaded. Look at identify, find the rear sights, find the front sight, 
figure out what it is that Charlie's talking about when he says that the, the two back the two back pillars and the front pillar all need to be lined up so there's equal spaces in between them and one's not taller or lower than the others so they're all three little blocks in a row or three little pins in a row you need to know what it, that view is from your gun Amanda I want to amplify that you could take 90% of shooting and saying it's rec learning to recognize your front sight and then how to press the trigger without disturbing the front sights. Mm -hmm. And you can do that without ammunition. You do need a safe direction to point the gun. But once you do, there's a lot you can learn. There's a lot you have to learn to learn how to shoot accurately. When, when I first got into shooting, I, um, I really liked the old, uh, the old gun instructors. And one of the books that I really enjoyed was a book by Jeff Cooper. And in this mm -hmm. book, I think it was the the modern book of um, comb uh, modern book of handgunning. I think is what it was. And in that book, he talked about having a training program. And the training program was to take your gun out, dry fire it, check it, make sure it's unloaded, double check it, and triple check it. And I think at the time he was just advocating for people to shoot at a light switch because it's small and it's on the other side of the room. And um, dry fire, dry fire, dry fire. And he would say that if you dry fire six days a week and then go out for maybe an hour on once a week on Saturday or Sunday and go out for an hour and you just shoot at three inch, a three inch target, seven feet away and then 10 feet and then 12 feet and 15 feet and, and keep moving the target back. But what the, the goal is to get all of the shots into that three inch target and then you progressively move the target further back and further back. And he, he said, if you, if you just do this for six months, you will be better than probably 90 to 95% of the shooters that are at the shooting range. And of course, oh, what did Jeff Cooper know? I thought I was smarter than Jeff Cooper was. So, so years went by and I said, you know, I probably should have taken that six months to put into uh, dry firing and practicing and using the Jeff Cooper method. Probably would have saved you a whole lot of <laughs> wasted ammo. Absolutely. The other thing that's important um, after you have your uh, your eye dominance, if you're doing some dry firing, if you've got good sight alignment, the other thing that you need to have is a nice smooth trigger squeeze. And that is, uh, you get that from dry practice or dry firing, which is shooting the gun without any ammunition in it. And it's just squeezing the trigger nice and smooth so that you don't misalign the front sight and the rear sight. And that is dry dry firing or dry practicing is a huge benefit to, to knowing that the gun is not going to go bang and you get used to uh, making your muscles squeeze the trigger nice and smooth so that you don't misalign the sights. Okay, so is there anything else that we really want to cover on that or do you think we've got, because I think we've covered well the issues of eye dominance and figuring out which one is the dominant eye and is it aligned with your shooting hand. We've covered what the sight picture should look like. And then we've covered um, a smooth, smooth trigger pull. You want, you want it like you, you want your trigger pull like you want your jazz, you know, that smooth. <laughs> smooth. <laughs> That's what you want. So, hey folks, we're listening and talking to Charlie Cook from Riding Shotgun with Charlie and with some of the staff from the Self-Defense Radio Network. We are doing this video and a variety of videos, so check them out, check out the other ones. See if there's something of interest for you. And, um, and then listen online for um, Self-Defense Radio Network at sdrn.us and you'll hear, you'll hear us doing whatever it is that we do.